Eight years ago, Leah and I met at a bar at our friend's birthday. I'm not gonna say that we're experts or anything, but we've had a pretty good run so far. So here is what we've learned over the last eight years. Good morning, everybody. We are here on Chesterman Beach in Tofino. Oh. Uh, I, it's like seven o'clock and there's no one else. There is on nobody the here. There's no one here. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is why people fall in love with Tofino. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the things that we have learned in our relationship in the beautiful eight years that we have been together. We've been together for eight years mm -hmm. and we're at that perfect halfway point where four of them we were dating and four of them we've been married. So we're gonna kind of talk to you about the things that we have learned and wish we knew before we got married. Number one on the list, which feels fitting, <laughs> is that you have to romanticize your life. I introduced this tip, but <laughs> the idea of romanticizing your life and enjoying and celebrating the moments of beauty in your life is definitely something that I learned from Leah. It's not like looking at your life through like rose-colored glasses, but really, at the end of it, all you have is this collection of memories. So why not think about them as these beautiful things? You're like, oh, remember when we did this? Even the like really <laughs> hard things, you and I, there's still a sense of like, pride and beauty in them of like, look at this really hard thing that we dealt with mm -hmm. and now we're on the other side of that and we're ready to face what's gonna come next. I remember like thinking about what we were gonna do for our wedding, hmm. you know, and, and whether or not it was all worth it. Like, is it worth getting a big tent in the backyard so that we can have all these people eating in the same place? Is it worth getting all these tablecloths and bringing out all this beer and doing all this fun stuff because I'm, you know, more economically minded. I'm very practical, <laughs> you know, I want everything to make sense and Leah wants them to be beautiful and, and, and it's, it's changed my life, honestly, you know, because what is life except for, you know, an opportunity to experience beauty. Hmm. Now I'm getting philosophical. I know. It's because it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's right really now. beautiful. I mean, come on. How are, how are you not philosophizing with this? And I think, particularly when the world is so messed up, there's yeah. so many things that are going wrong, so many injustices, and you can do what you can do. You need to educate yourself and give back to your community in ways that you can. But at the same time, you need to look after yourself. Like you need to enjoy and experience pleasure in order to like keep going. Cause you burning out, it's not gonna help anyone. So we checked into Hotel Z yesterday after a long drive. And this place is absolutely insane. Full disclosure, Hotel Z has gifted us our night's accommodation here. They know that it's our anniversary, so they pulled through because we have a YouTube channel, so please bear that in mind. Yes, they're awesome. Yes, we are a little biased. And they brought us champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel Z is a local Vancouver Island based hotel chain. This is their third location and it is so cool to stay in such a unique space. Here is just a little highlight reel of what they have going on. They have this beautiful sunken living room in the lobby, a bike path that runs through the entire hotel, a VW bus made out of driftwood, a hot tub and sauna, and access to the Tofino Inlet. They also have a cool zero waste coffee service, which is pretty awesome. They also have bike rentals here, which is super cool because they have a ton of bike lanes around this area that have recently been installed. We might get to check that out tomorrow, but right now we're gonna go and get some lunch. The original Taco Fino. Ooh. Now, if you watched the vlog from a couple of weeks ago, yes, Leah and I did go to another <laughs> Taco Fino, That's the in one Victoria. in Victoria, and here we are at uh, the one that started it all. It's huge. It's like this, a... this burrito just looks like a square. <laughs> That's mine. Oh, you have the kombucha. kombucha. And it's round too? Yeah. Good choice. So number two is that you will continue to learn things about your partner. 
Like, they love to film you when you're eating. <laughs> Constantly. See, I've known for a while that Leah loves kombucha, but I didn't learn that until our fourth, maybe even fifth year of being together. And sometimes it's not just their preference of beverage. Sometimes it's a lot more meaningful than that. What I learned about Levi is that <laughs> the most reliable way to get him to be quiet and to listen is to feed him. Because <laughs> then there's something in his mouth. <laughs> So when you get married, it's expected that you've like found this person and that you will live happily ever after. But the whole point of life is that you're going to change. That's the only constant thing that's gonna happen. We would love to think that marriage simply casts in time that perfect moment that you were perfectly in love and that everything was great, but <laughs> that just will not happen. And uh, the sooner you realize that, probably the better off you'll be. The love that we had for each other when we got married was really strong and really amazing, but it's nothing compared to the love that we have for each other now. And it's like deeper and richer and far more complex. Look at this, thought the whole gang out here. Hey. That's fantastic. We are a dangerous team. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most Tofino thing I think I've seen since so getting here. <laughs> wow. Wouldn't be a Levi and Leah holiday without beer. Oh. Hi. Yes, hello. Hi. Give me bed some. <laughs> yes, hello. Hi. Oh my God, Sir. Oh, yes, yes. Oh God, yes. Hello. Oh wow. Oh, and now he's just done. He's like, yeah, you know what? And it's over. It's over. That was it. <laughs> well, thanks anyway. The other thing we wish we knew is that people are always going to ask you when you're going to buy a French bulldog. <laughs> and by French bulldog, we mean when are you going to have kids? I really thought that that was going to cool off when we got married. I, I sort of assumed that us getting married was like the move that everybody wanted to see and then once we were married people could kind of shut up about it you know like no no i feel like marriage gives people a license to ask you about your sex life in a way <laughs> that they didn't ask before it is strange people become a lot more willing to comment on on your life because there's sort of an assumed trajectory like mm -hmm. you have now become married and and therefore the path that you follow is pretty much charted like there there is just a logical in quotation marks path that you follow now that you've made that initial commitment and that pressure is really real I mean I understand where it's coming from like anytime that we are with our niece or our nephews like we love the shit out of them and like I we do really want to have kids but that's still ultimately a decision we're gonna make and I feel like we get asked quite often and it's not just even from our families it's like online random people as soon yeah. as they know that you're married they're like babies when's that happening i couldn't imagine being a person who's married without ever having the expectation of having kids or not being able to have kids like that would be oh. such a unfortunate cultural norm that you would have to contend with every single day and even as people who do want kids it does feel like uh a negation of the choices that we're making now. Like we're very career focused and people are like, yeah, 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 that's cool, baby. When are you gonna have kids? When, when is that next part, the most important part of your life start? Don't get me wrong, I'm gonna love our kids. It's gonna be an amazing adventure. We're not there yet. It's good to hear you say that because sometimes I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> True, okay. we actually just passed a kid on the beach <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Okay, so Leah, there's a secret door somewhere in here. You have to find it. Okay. Um, yeah, continue. Will you find it? I I know it somehow. Where? How do you open secret doors, my love? You books? Yeah. <gasps> oh my oh. God! Are you serious? No. What is going on? Oh my I God! Am so, what? I am so delighted. Right now. <laughs> 
What is happening right now? I'm so delighted. What? Oh my lord. <laughs> what? Wow. Okay. And you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was so great. This place is insane. I'm just thoroughly delighted. But I will say, the fifth thing that we thought of is that you do feel more secure when you get married. There is sort of an assumption that comes along with marriage that you are more committed than you are if you're just in a long-term relationship and that is partially a social construct. Society has decided that like the real thing is when you get married, but it, it, it does, it does. It feels more secure. There's lots of people in our lives who don't plan on ever getting married or have been together for like 20, 30 plus years yeah. and never sign that piece of paper. It doesn't mean they love each other any less or are any less committed to each other. But for us, it really does feel like a, hey, we signed up for this life together and let's do this together. And I think it's also a symbolic thing for both of our families. like. Mm. From my parents knowing that you are here for me for the entirety of my life in theory and in sickness and health, etc. Like, I think that means a lot to them also. So it, it's, yeah. it's bigger than just us. Totally. I mean, I think particularly because of your heart condition, I think that does hmm. play into it. But I also think that with our families, you know, and having a wedding ceremony where the people closest to us got to witness us making this promise to each other, it was also a way for people to invest in us, mm. right? Levi's family can now fully invest in me because they're like, ah, she's not going anywhere. Humans are so weird. We make up all of this stuff and yet we are so hung up on it. We think yeah. it's so important and like, <laughs> Isn't we it? invented all of this. It's all just an Everything. invention, but for some reason it works. I don't it's know. Not, mm, does it doesn't work. It's very powerful. Levi. We're going to the hot tub. Now we're going to the hot tub. I'm going to switch this off. <laughs> oh. 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 Yes. Oh. Yes. Look at this. Oh. Uh. We are drinking our. It's tasty water. It's tasty water. Because we need to stay hydrated. We're drinking our tasty water in the hot tub on our anniversary. And I think this is the perfect opportunity for us to elaborate on our last point. I forget what it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last point? The last thing on our list is that you don't need to be everything for each other. Mm, I think that's such a good point. What we see in the media and all the time is like you find your soulmate, your one person who's like your best friend and your confidant and your lover and everything else and like too much pressure to have on your spouse, mm -hmm. like too, way too much pressure. It sounds a little revolutionary, but it's actually super not. If you have family members that you love, if you are a part of a friend group that fulfills you in certain ways, that's what we're talking about. It's one of the things that Esther Perel talks about, the expectations that we have of our partners. And she has this really great diagram of like, it's an image of a person, just like a regular sized person. And then it's like our expectations of our partners. And it's like a disproportionate, like three times the size the expectations versus the reality of who this person is. And when you expect so much out of someone, you expect them to fulfill you in all of these mm. like really diverse ways, then I think you're really obscuring who that person is and what they can offer you. Okay, so we have brought you along on a good chunk of one day of our anniversary weekend. We're gonna spend the rest of our anniversary weekend together um, alone. Without you. Without the I'm camera so on. I'm sorry. Thank you everybody for watching, for subscribing, for being here, of course. And uh, if you are subscribed, then we'll see you in the next episode. Woo. Bye. <gasps> Don't do that. <laughs>
Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no. Holy smokes. Whoa, whoa. This is amazing. Whoa. Look at that. That is spectacular. Leave things for next time.